We will today be talking about our buddy, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Let's give you the quick rundown on this fella. All right. He was born in 1821 and died in 1877. 56 years. I mean, not bad. He was in the Civil War era, after all. He was a Confederate general from 1861 to 1865. He went from private to lieutenant general throughout the course of the war. Not four years even. Now, he's got a famous quote. Get there first with the most men. Now, that seems pretty obvious. But I'll tell you the hidden comedy of it. He got there first, and he had more men. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, don't, don't applaud me yet, all right? Okay. Now, a notable success he had was the Vicksburg Campaign from 1862 to 1863. Pretty notable success. We'll get more into that later. Now, this isn't as great. He massacred black soldiers after a Union surrender at Fort Pillow in 1864. Now, this is a pretty, this is a start of a long track record of uh, mega racism, if you know what I'm saying. And he became the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. Now that's what I call mega racist, you know what I'm saying? Okay, here's his early life. Alright, we're gonna go, we're gonna dig right into his early life. Get good, those good juicy details. How to? You know what I'm saying? Nathan Bedford Forrest was born in Chapel Hill, Tennessee on July 13, 1821. Went into business with his uncle, who tragically died in a street fight in 1845. But you know what? Forrest wasn't going to take that thing down. He wasn't going to let his uncle just get killed. He retaliated by killing two of the murderers with a handgun and a bowie knife. Now, I bet those attackers were like, when he pulled up on them with a the handgun and the bowie knife. All right. Then he married this nice little young lady named Mary Ann Montgomery and had two children with her. He owned a stagecoach company and he, uses, he started being racist right around here. He became a slave trader in 1852. And that's when he made his fortune off of. He owned two cotton plantations in 1860. And now we're starting to get into the Civil War years. So let's transition into his Civil War years, where he served in the Civil War. Now, the Civil War started in 1861. He enlisted immediately into the Tennessee Mounted Rifles. He equipped the unit with his own money, because he remember, this man was balling from his slave money. He was quickly promoted to lieutenant colonel, assumedly because of his balling money. And he trained his own mounted battalion. Now that's what I call fancy. He issued a recruiting notice which read, Come on, boys, if you want to heap a fun and to kill some Yankees. That is what it said word for word. And, well, you know, this guy was shot in the back while personally engaging with Union skirmishers during a battle. Yeah, he, just, he just pulled up on a few Union guys and he was like, what? Da -da 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 You know what I'm saying? He pulled, he pulled up like that, you're right? Now, if you think that's racist, just wait until you see Nathan Bedford Forrest at his max. Now, he was promoted to Brigadier General after taking a Union garrison at Murfreesboro. In his Vicksburg campaign, now we're going to get more in depth. It was an operation to protect the Mississippi River hub in Vicksburg, Tennessee. Very important, he tried to protect it from Union attack. So, Forrest harassed and raided Grant's Union army and supply lines utilizing guerrilla tactics. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's not the monkey, alright? It's not... It is in stop, stop. It's not the monkey, okay? It's not. All right, he just runs away. He goes in the woods. He hides and he shoots him. Unconventional military tactics, all right? Now, the Fort Pillow Massacre was in 1864, all right? He was promoted in February of 1865 to lieutenant general. Then he just finally got defeated at Fort Selma in 1865. He was like, oh, now I'm sad. So he disbanded his forces. After the rest of the Confederacy surrendered. Now, after the war, he <laughs> he, went, he went jogging back to Tennessee. So he, he had kind of a very plate of jobs and stuff. He was a lumber merchant, he was a planter, and he was he just a little bit of the president of the Salma Marin, Marion and Memphis Railroad. In the late 1860s, he began associating with the KKK. Whoa. Now, this is where he becomes the bad boy of the situation. He got a leather coat, got the fingerless gloves. Anyways. In the late 1860s, he began associating with the KKK. He terrorized blacks, and he attacked the Reformation effort. In 1866, he became the Grand Wizard, assumably because he could see the future, with his laser eye. Optic blast! With his laser eyes, you know, see the future because he's a wizard. 
but he denies it in 1871 because he got taken to the Joint Congressional Committee. Now, these guys, they know their judicial stuff. I mean, legislate, legislative stuff, not judicial. All right, listen, I know my branch is Mr. Jinger's still yelling. All right. His railroad business failed in 1874, probably because he was racist. So, because he was racist, again, he just wanted to see some more slaves, so he oversaw a prison labor camp near Memphis. And he died in 1877 at age 56.